Okay, so welcome. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start the uh, tutorial now. So this tutorial is building gigabit rate routers with the NetFPGA. And the tutorial will be presented by myself. I'm John Lockwood from Stanford University. And Adam Covington is joining me to present this. He's sitting right there. And from University of Cambridge is Andrew Moore. He's going to be talking through the slides as well and presenting this with us. Uh, we're going to run today from 9 to 5. And so we have breaks scheduled between the morning session and in the afternoon session uh, and over lunch. So we'll run an hour and a half for each session. So we'll go from now until 10.30 and from 11 till 12.30. And then we'll come back after lunch, run for another hour and a half, and then end up at 5 o'clock. But take a break, end up at 5 o'clock. Uh, we will, everyone should be, is already sitting at a machine, either sharing a machine with a few people or you've got your own. That's great. So to start off the talk, I want to talk about what is the NetFPGA. So the NetFPGA is a combination of two things. It's networking software that runs on a standard PC. So we've got a CPU and memory uh, connected by a PCI bus to a hardware accelerator that's built with field programmable gate arrays driving gigabit ethernet links. So directly connected the PCI bus through a bridge is a Xilinx Vertex FPGA it has local SRAM and DRAM attached to it, and it has four gigabit Ethernet ports that connect to the FPGA. So this is a photograph of the NetFPGA board, and if you look inside the PC that's on your desk, you'll see that you have one sitting in the slot. And this is the system that they're installed in. So the system is a standard PC running Linux or running CentOS on all these machines, and uh, that's the NetFPGA as it's installed in the box. So. The target audience for people that use the NetFPGA are teachers, students, and researchers. And there's different ways that they use the NetFPGA. One is to run the router kit. So if you're interested in running an internet router, but what's different about this router is it's an open source, both at the hardware level and software level, um, router kit is that you can route internet traffic over the NetFPGA. Uh, you can build modular reference designs, and so the IPv4 router is the source that's included with the distribution package. You can also use the NetFPGA as a four-port gigabit Ethernet NIC. So if you want to do things like network monitoring or intrusion detection, uh, that you can implement that on top of the NetFPGA and use a combination of hardware and software to implement that. But the software, you can treat it as if it were a four-port gigabit Ethernet NIC. And you can create entirely new networking systems. If you want to do something that has nothing to do with IP, and it's a whole new protocol that you want to try out that you can throw away the components and start and implement your own pieces. So as an example of the router kit is that we provide the router kit, which it, the software component consists of uh, user space software, a kernel driver that talks to NetFPGA. So in user space, you can run things like routing protocols like OSPF and BGP. Uh, in hardware, you can maintain routing tables. And then in the NetFPGA, you can maintain a forwarding table that mirrors the routing table so that as you have routes, you can push those routes down into the NetFPGA router. And you can use the local memory attached to the FPGA for doing things like packet buffering. So as packets come in off the wire, they can be buffered using the local memory without ever going up to the host. So packet comes in goes to the FPGA and it goes out another gigabit link, the normal case, 90% of the time, is the traffic should never be touching the host processor. So you can get an accelerator by, by offloading by offloading function. Right. So to build the modular router is that we have the, the base packages come with input queue management, L2 parsing, so we do uh, layer 2 parsing of the Ethernet header, L3 parsing to, to process the internet IP protocol header. We do an IP lookup for longest prefix matching, and then packets after you determine where they go get put into an output queue and written out to one of the gigabit ethernet ports. NetFPJ software, we've got a Java GUI, which is giving you control and configuration of the hardware. OSPF, which runs as a lightweight version of OSPF that we call PeeWee OSPF. Uh, runs as an application on the on the machine. And my block, which is your block, are 
if you want to add components to NetFPGA router, the easiest way to do it is to use the existing interface and, and drop your logic into a new block and connect it to the rest of the components. Uh, you can run through the synthesis tools so that you can run uh, the Xilinx ISE design flow in order to uh, synthesize your design, and you can download that into the, uh, into the FPGA. You can also use tools like Minigraphics or Synopsys in order to simulate and design, simulate your circuit if you want to uh, be able to see all the waveforms of the signals before you synthesize it. So this is the option if you want to create an entirely new system that you can take my design, you can replace all the internal components on the NetFPGA, have your own software that runs on the Linux system, and build your own router that runs on the NetFPGA. So what we're going to cover in this tutorial today is we're going to start off by Andrew's going to provide us an overview of IP routing. I'll talk some more about the inside details of the NetFPGA platform. Uh, we have the Stanford based reference router. So we'll give a demonstration. Adam will come up and give a demonstration of the reference router running on the NetFPGA. So all 10 of these machines are connected and we'll use them as routers to route traffic and stream video between all the, all the machines and routers in this room. Uh, dig inside the NetFPGA hardware, go through some of the Verilog code that implements the hardware functionality on the NetFPGA, and then Adam will lead us through an exercise, the first exercise, to build your own router. And so I'll actually let you synthesize the router from source code, run a make, let it compile and synthesize, probably take a break while it's running, while the CAD tools are, are busy doing their job, come back and you'll have your own router. Uh, next thing is we'll do an enhanced reference router is that Andrew will give us some motivation for, on the internet, the buffer size requirements you need for effectively transferring TCP traffic over the internet. And there's been some question lately on whether or not you need perhaps more or less buffers in order to get effective throughput on the network. If you have smaller buffers, you can get less latency. And so the NetFPGA can be used as a platform, a measurement platform and a test platform so that if you're running TCP across multiple machines or across a network, that you can actually see what the effect is of adjusting that buffer size on a real TCP flow. And so sometimes using measurement is more effective than trying to, uh, to do it by theory because there's so many factors that go into a network router and into the TCP stack that that coming up with a unified theory that would predict your performance is very difficult. So an exercise too that this enhanced reference router will be synthesized and built and run on the hardware. Uh, the next step is to walk through the life of a packet as it goes through the NetFPGA hardware. That we'll talk about the hardware data path, talk about the hardware software interfaces between the NetFPGA and the kernel and the user space applications. And We'll have you develop, write your own module that goes into the hardware, which is a module that drops every nth packet. And so what's interesting about that is that it's a hardware implemented component, and you can see what the effect is, say, on a TCP flow of dropping every nth packet. Uh, then we'll go through some concluding remarks. We'll talk about how the NetFPJ can be used for research and teaching, and what course material is available if you would like to use this in a classroom. Uh, we'll have a group discussion, so everyone in this room will participate in thinking about, well, talking about what is your research or what classes are you teaching, um, what challenges do you have with teaching your class, is that what makes it difficult to teach a networking class. Uh, for your research, what is it that you'd like to do in your research that you can't do now? And we also have a survey, an online survey that we'll ask everyone to fill out, which is feedback on this session and also your thoughts on what your next steps might be if you're to, to use this. <coughs> so that's the plan for today, is that we will get through all this. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you at the end of the, at the, in the last session of the day, and hope that you find the exercises interesting. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Andrew, who's going to walk us through IP Right, right good morning. Uh, so Apologies in first because some of this is going to be material that some of you are going to be familiar with but we all want to start from the same uh, knowledge base. 